What camera do you guys use on the trail? This is a question that I saw in the comments more than twice. We use a GoPro Hero 7 Black with the specific setup for audio and video. However, in this video today, we want to bring to you a variety of options and cameras for the trail. And because we do have experience with three specific cameras, we brought to you some of our friends who create top-notch outdoors content to share with you some of their favorite cameras on the trail. And joining us today is Taylor from Southern Hike, Diane from Recreation Outside Las Vegas, Kaiser from Kaiser Sayed YouTube channel, and myself. And if you guys are new here, my name is Habiba and this is Trekking Pals. And today we are talking about the best cameras for the trail. Let's go! As we believe that the best camera for the trail is the one that you already have. And most of us already have uh, a smartphone and chances are if you are gonna go hiking or backpacking, you are probably gonna take your phone with you for directions. Maybe you are using a mobile application for hiking and backpacking. And so the new generation of smartphones, they do have powerful camera to either take photos or videos. I've experimented a little bit with my smartphone. It's an iPhone 7 Plus and we experimented with Alex's phone, the Google Pixel, and they both have strong cameras. Now, there are three main downfalls when you are using your phone to take videos on the trail. I'm gonna talk mainly about videos. And the first one is if you are gonna be holding your phone with your hand, chances are you're gonna end up dropping it at some point. And then the second thing, when you are gonna be filming with your hand, chances are your footage is going to be shaky. Things that you can do in order for you to enhance the quality of your content if you are filming on your phone. You can probably use a selfie stick that's going to help you to stabilize your content. Or if you want to take it a step up, you can go with a gimbal. It's going to be extra weight, but it's going to guarantee a better quality for your footage. And the third downfall is the wide angle. If you are using your phone to film yourself talking, you're probably gonna see more than 90% on the screen. It's going to be you, not a lot of things behind you. There are also things that you can do to make the angle wider. You can use one of the moment lenses that hook to the phone and they give you a wider view when you are filming, when you are making stories on social media and when you are taking photos. The other thing is maybe not a lot of people pay attention to that, but if you go to your settings on your mobile phone, you can change the settings on the video mode. Usually the default is filming at 1080p, which is already great quality. But if you want better quality for your content and you want to film at 4K, all you have to do is go to settings, look for the camera, go to video mode and choose 4K. The one thing to keep in mind is if you are going to be filming at 4K, that's probably going to take double the space compared to filming at 1080p. So make sure that you do have enough storage on your phone. And that wraps it up for the first camera, the smartphone camera. The second camera on the list is actually the one that I'm filming with right now, and that is a mirrorless Sony Alpha. The Sony Alpha series are actually great. Mirrorless cameras, generally speaking, compared to the regular DSLRs, tend to be very lightweight. They do have a lightweight body. And for me, when I think about hiking, backpacking and filming, the lighter, the better. So the Sony Alpha series are great. We use an Alpha 6300. And uh, if we were looking at upgrading, we would be probably looking at the Alpha 7.3. They all are great cameras and they are very practical. The quality of the footage is great. Again, for us, we don't use them for making videos, mostly when I'm making videos at home. But when we are hiking and backpacking, um, we use the Sony Alpha 6300 to take photos and then we use the GoPro to take videos. Now with the Sony Alpha, if I want to use it to film, I would make sure that I have a tripod and a microphone just to filter out all the noise. And I think that's the same setup that our friend Taylor from Southern Hike is using. And that will take us to the third camera on the list, the Canon EOS R, and I will pass it over to you, Taylor. What's up guys? My name is Taylor. Me and my wife Rachel have a channel called Southern Hike, all one word. We do outdoor videos, we do how-tos and tutorials, and Trekking Pals has kindly asked us to share why we use the camera setup we use, and then also review it a little bit. So the main camera we use is a Canon EOS R with the 24 to 105 zoom lens. So to break the camera down in three parts, I have the 3K 
Gorillapod by Joby. Works really well. I can keep it balanced on my hand when I'm walking. It doesn't become really heavy. And then also we have the Rode Video Mic Micro. It works really well. It's got the cat that comes with it. We'll use it on the trail, but if I'm doing a video here at home and then I don't really need it for any extra wind noise, I'll kind of take it off. And then the last thing is, is as I've talked about already, is the 24 to 105 lens. It's very versatile. We can do our wide angle for doing any kind of talking on camera and also still be able to reach out if we see anything we want to get a picture of. It, for example, like an animal so it works really well. This is an overall good setup. It's just worked really well for us. To break it down, it's there's probably three parts to this. The reason why we stick with this camera. So the first reason would be autofocus. I autofocus is very good at keeping making sure that it stays focused on my face and also very good color. It does really well outdoors. We try to use an ND filter sometimes but we don't have to a lot in a lot of areas where there's canopy. It does really well with color and just gives a really good image. The second thing, so yes since it's a like semi-pro camera, it's water resistant. It can handle, I mean I've used it in the rain quite a few times now and then it's also very durable. Third reason is is that we don't necessarily film everything in 4k a lot of people do but we found that 1080 works really well for us the resolution is still really good and obviously YouTube doesn't do as much compression when you have 1080 we don't have to worry about memory on our SD card we can carry one card and be able to fill up with plenty of footage for an entire day and still have room to take photos and just one last thing to say is it's also a very good photo camera so we're out on the trail doing videos and things like that it still can capture some good images anywhere we're at on the trail as we all like to try to keep our Instagram up to date. Guys, I hope this is going to be informing if you are interested in a Canon camera and thank you for trekking pals again for asking us. Thank you so much Taylor. The Canon EOS R is also a very powerful camera. As I was saying earlier, the setup when it comes to the Rode microphone and the Gorilla Joby tripod, we do use pretty much the same. It's very lightweight. It's going to help you stabilize your content. It's very easy to manage. Again, when you are hiking, you're probably logging heavy gear, especially if you are backpacking and you want to make sure that your setup is as optimized as possible. And with that, I will pass it over to Kaiser from Kaiser Sayed, who is going to introduce us to a beautiful camera. I personally didn't know about it before, but he really got me curious. Check it out. Hey, Habiba and Alex. Thanks for having me in this video. Uh, my name is Kaiser and I do tech reviews on travel friendly tech and also tech that can help you create awesome travel videos. Hiking and backpacking is an amazing activity and I also occasionally go for hikes. And when I do, I like to travel as light as possible so that I don't fatigue or tire myself out. So what if I told you that you can carry a camera that can give you a high resolution, stunning pictures, super smooth videos just like the GoPro and also has a built in gimbal. All that that can fit into your pocket. No jokes, allow me to introduce you to my little friend Femi Palm. This pocket camera can take 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. You can even do 1080p at 60 frames per second. And if you want to take some great pictures, it has a 12 megapixel sensor to get some amazing pictures as well. Just like the GoPro, this pocket camera can give you ultra wide, super wide, and even narrow viewing angles. And this is an amazing thing to have because if you want to capture as much as we want when we are hiking, so the ultra wide viewing angle is absolutely a must. And because this has a built-in gimbal, your videos do not come out shaky at all and rather are pretty smooth, I must say. And that's a very important feature to have as well when we are hiking because you don't want all those shakes transferring into your videos. So you want a very smooth and balanced gimbal. And that's what the pocket camera has. Now, another great feature about having a built-in gimbal is that not only can you record in video mode, when you tap the record button three times, you can do selfie as well. Now you can even start vlogging while you're hiking. And the best part about this camera is that it has a built-in face detection. So that means while you're vlogging, the camera will always be facing towards you, making sure that you're always within the frame. You also have a joystick here, so you can definitely take control of the gimbal and move the camera as you like and even get into some creative shots. The Femi Palm comes with a lot of features. You get all the different type of capture modes. You have slow motion, you have time lapse, hyperlapse, panoramic, and you can even take pictures in the night using the night shot mode. These are some really good features to have in your pocket camera because it really enhances the way you create the story or even present your videos. The Femi Palm does not end there. You can also download an app for iOS and Android devices. It's called Femi Play. And now that app gives you an ability to control the pocket camera remotely from your smartphone. In case if you're wondering, 
This pocket camera only weighs 120 grams and it can record up to 240 minutes. And for storage, you can use a micro SD card and it can take up to a 256 micro SD. In terms of pricing, the last time I saw online, this pocket camera was going for $299. A lot more can be told about this amazing gadget. This pocket camera is fantastic. And I leave it to you guys to go ahead and grab one and you can see all the wonders that this little pocket camera is capable of doing. Hope this was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hiking and always stay safe. Back to you Trekking Pals. Thank you so much Kaiser. I really am curious about this camera. It just feels like it fits the bill when it comes to the best camera for hiking and backpacking. It has a built-in gimbal, it's lightweight, very tiny, compact. This is exactly what I personally look for when I am choosing the camera for the trail. And that takes us to the next camera, and that is our favorite camera, the GoPro. We, I mentioned earlier, we use a GoPro Hero 7 Black, and this is the setup that we use. There's the camera, the cage, the adapter, the GoPro Shorty. That's an extension pole with a built-in tripod, as well as the microphone, but I'm using the microphone to film this video right there. We will have a separate video up here with more details about the setup that we use. But the GoPros in general are great. They have great stabilization feature, 4K resolution when it comes to making videos. It's waterproof if you are doing any uh, water hikes. It is designed and built for extreme sports. So. For hiking and backpacking, this is a great camera. We use the 7, but there are newer generations or models. There is the GoPro Hero 8. That's the one that Diane will talk about. And then just a few weeks ago, they released the new GoPro Hero 9 Black. If you are curious to check a review about that one, you can check this video that I put together up there. Pretty much just comparing the 7, the 8, and 9. And with that, I will pass it over to Diane from Recreation Outside Las Vegas. She uses the GoPro Hero 8 Black and she's going to do a quick review for us here. Hi, my name is Diane and this is Recreation Outside Las Vegas. I create videos about hiking, exploring, and camping near the Las Vegas area, but I also travel around Nevada, Arizona, California, Utah, and sometimes even beyond. I was invited by Habiba and Alex of the Trekking Pals to give a review on the GoPro Hero 8. The GoPro Hero 8 is the best investment that I've made for having a YouTube channel, but even if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would love to have this to document my adventures. It's easy to use, it's lightweight, I can go anywhere with this, even on the longest hikes, I don't really have to worry about weight with the GoPro Hero 8. The reason why I purchased the GoPro Hero 8 is because of this thing called the Media Mod. And what the Media Mod is, is it's a case that goes over the GoPro. All right, so I put the Media Mod on there for you that so that you could see. Now it does look a lot bulkier now. If you notice the back, there's a lot of options here to plug in a USB-C, an external mic, and some other options. There's also shoes on the top and on the side. So what these shoes would do is you can actually plug in an external light. You can put an external mic on the top of this and eventually they are making a, a screen that would flip up so it would be easier to do the vlogging you could see yourself. So that was actually one of the main reasons why I bought this. I did have the GoPro Hero 7 for a short period of time. However, the GoPro Hero 7 that I had, I had issues with it just turning on randomly and I couldn't get that issue to stop. So I did return the GoPro. And when the GoPro Hero 8 came out, I wanted to give it a second chance. I think that this purchase is definitely worth it, especially with the Media Mod. The Media Mod also has a microphone that is attached to the Media Mod. It's inside, so the microphone that is part of the Media Mod is just incredible. It is a lot better than the microphone that is on the GoPro. However, the GoPro microphone works just as well. One of the the things that I really like the most about the GoPro Hero 8 is the 
display or the the functions menu it's really easy to just scroll through and get what you need and then you just click on there and you can determine what resolution you want it's easy to just go in select and then get to filming which is really important when you have an adventure going on you know you don't want to stop and have to figure out what you're doing scroll through a million things and then just try to figure out what you're doing but I think that the display is really easy to read and very user friendly I would highly recommend the GoPro Hero 8 if you don't have the GoPro Hero 7 or something similar with amazing image stabilization. The image stabilization is just incredible. I don't think that I could ever go back to just using my phone, which had pretty good image stabilization, but the GoPro is just really incredible. If you don't have the 7, I would suggest purchasing the 8 just because the price difference really isn't that much more and you would have a newer model of GoPro and I do believe that the GoPro Hero 8 fixed some of the bugs that I had in the GoPro Hero 7 so I do highly recommend it especially for the price point comparing it to the older models and like I said the GoPro Hero 8 is the best investment that I've made for adventures. I really do like to document my adventures. I feel that the battery lasts for a pretty long time, usually about two hours, and that is a significant amount of time. You're not filming usually for a whole two hours. You usually turn it off and turn it on when you need to use it. GoPro Hero 8 is definitely a good investment if you're into outdoor adventure vlogging. What's great about the GoPro is that it's so small and compact that I literally take this thing everywhere. I have it in my bag at all times because you never know I might go on a spontaneous adventure so I really do love the size and even with the media mod it's still so small. The media mod makes it easy to charge. I don't have to take off any covers or anything to start charging the GoPro also. So that is one thing to note. And that is it for my review of the GoPro Hero 8. Thank you so much, Diane. The GoPro Hero 8 Black is also a good camera for outdoor filming or for taking photos. Again, the newest model or the newest generation is the GoPro 9. And we do have a video where we are comparing the 7, 8, and nine, you can check that one up here. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I do definitely lean towards the GoPro, everything GoPro. I think that it was specifically designed for the outdoors and they just work perfectly fine. And with that, let's move on to the last camera that I have on the list here. Honestly speaking, this is not a camera that I've tried for myself, but I've been eyeing it out for a couple of months right now, just trying to Think about it before jumping the gun and investing in it. And that is the Insta 360 R. It is also an action camera and it's probably one of the major competitors for the GoPro. The interesting thing about this camera is that you can use all of the uh, cool planet effect at uh, 360 degrees mode. You can also use it for the flat mode. So I find this one to be really exciting and interesting. The workflow is perfect. You can use the app in order to make some cool effects and cool videos, um, especially videos. You can also use it for photos. Uh, it's very versatile. You can change lenses if you want to. So I actually don't know much about this camera, but I'm going to leave the link in the description box for a review from a YouTuber that I respect. Um, and you can check it out for yourself, but it seems like it's a good option for making content outdoors. And I think that wraps it up for the list of the best cameras for the trail today. I hope that you guys found this to be useful. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. We are Trekking Paths, Habiba and Alex, and we create video content about hiking, backpacking and adventure traveling. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you very soon on a new adventure. Bye.